Welcome back to the Hot Tip Daily Pick Show for UFC 266. Finally got another pay-per-view on the cards. I don't know why the UFC and Dana were waiting so long for this one. You know, it's been almost a month and a half, probably longer than that since the last main or the last pay-per-view event. So, um, but he gave us a pretty good one here. Got a lot of great fights. Honestly, I don't remember having a UFC card quite this big in some time. So let's just jump right into it. I'm Tyron Jackson. No time with the first bet. The first fight of the night, Jonathan Pierce taking on Omar Morales. Morales to 11 and 1 in his pro career. Jonathan Pierce is 10 and 4. Um, and you know, Morales did get a pretty good win over Shane Young in his last fight. Um, really, you know, rebounded from that Gija Khadid fight that he, he had the you know the fight before, which honestly hasn't really turned out to be that bad of a fight. You know, that is, is probably a pretty good loss to have on the record. And he is just a very, very strong fighter. For Jonathan Pierce, though. Comes into this one following a TKO win over Kai Kamaka. You know, did you know didn't look impressive in that UFC debut against Joe Luzano, um, but he did you know rebound here in the second fight, and, and I really do expect a pretty good fight against him, Morales here again in this fight. Um, Fort Pierce, you know, likes to push pace in his fights. He's a very athletic fighter, got a pretty good striking skill set. Um, one thing he's going to have to do better here against Morales though is defending those kicks. You know, Morales is a very good kickboxer. Not to mention just a very good boxing striking skill set in general and morales has got the two and a half inch reach advantage so um definitely something pierce is gonna have to work on um and if pierce isn't careful you know those leg kicks can can definitely end the fight very early for him um however you know pierce is a decent wrestler he's got a, a ground and prowl that can you know be a problem for opponents you know and i say decent wrestler he's not the best wrestler in the world his wrestling skill set um definitely leaves something to be desired but he can get guys to the ground and just beat the crap out of him um you know his only you know finish or he because he is just a great finisher his only decision victory coming all the way back in 2015 i believe it was his second fight of his pro career um so definitely a guy who likes to finish guys um and morales though you know he he is a guy who's patient he waits for his op his opponents to make mistakes and get his opportunities um and he's got some good takedown defense so that's something that pierce is definitely going to have to try to to work around um but i think pierce grappling and ground and pound um makes this fight you know gives him the edge here in this fight and really i think it's, it's going to be a hard competitive matchup for morales here um i think this fight you know gets finished in the second round i think pierce probably gets a knockout maybe a submission um but i think he knocks him out so like pierce plus 131 here in this fight now, the second fight on the card, Nick Maximov taking on Carl Robertson. Maximov undefeated, 6-0, making his UFC debut in this fight. Carl Robertson, 9-4 in his pro career. And, you know, he's on a two-fight losing streak. Um, you know, both those losses against Brendan Allen and Marvin Vittori uh, coming in the first round, you know, both via submission. And, in fact, all four of his losses um, in his pro career here have been via submission, which doesn't necessarily set him up great against Maximov here in this fight. You know, Maximov coming out of the Diaz camp and, you know, in that contender series victory over Oscar Okada, um, you know, he took that fight on very short notice up to weight classes. It, and he looked good you know he won the fight you know it wasn't the most polished fighter in the world um but given the circumstances he did look very good in that matchup and he's got the submission skill set that robertson is gonna really struggle against you know um he has a, a good matchup for this fight honestly for maximov and robertson um his striking though does leave something to be desired for maximov um he does have the two inch reach advantage which you know should help him out a little bit here in this one but for robertson um you know he has more experience he He's fought some big names in the UFC. He's had some big UFC fights before. So that definitely gives him an advantage here on a pay-per-view, you know, making their UFC debut, debut on the pay-per-view. Never the, the easiest task in the world. Um, and Robertson is not the worst fighter on the ground. He can definitely do damage. Um, and he has his own submission skills, no doubt. But the fact that his submission defense is just so lacking, you know, it just seems like he, he's constantly on the ground. And if he gets locked up, you know, we've seen all four of his losses come via submission. And in those last two fights, he really just struggled to defend himself when he got to the ground. Um, honestly, I think he has a better chance if he keeps this thing on the feet because he is the better striker than Maximoff heading into this fight. So that would really be robertson's path to victory here but i think maximov is the better fighter honestly i think his path to victory get this thing to the mat and try to just find a way to submit robertson um but also don't go out of your way you know just use the ground and pound use that grappling skill set but i think maximov 
is a really good prospect. He's a really good up and coming fighter. You know, I could end up eating my words on this one, but um, I think he gets a pretty easy victory here. I like him minus 115 in this fight. Now, the next fight on the card, Euros Medic taking on Jalen Turner, Medic 7 and 0 in his pro career, Turner 10 and 5. And for Turner, you know, got the win over Brock Weaver in his last fight. And he's just a guy who I have loved to watch fight. You know, Medic um, won in his DUSC debut against Alan Cruz. Or, um, yeah, Alan Cruz. Um, and, you know, he had a pretty good, you know, KO in his debut. The Contender Series fight were both, you know, good knockouts for him. Um, and he's only had one fight in his career go longer than one round. No fight go longer than six minutes. So definitely Medic is a guy who's going to come out aggressive and look to knock you out. You know, he, he likes to come out with that heat, likes to come out swinging but turner's not a weak guy he's a guy who can definitely take some punches and has powerful hands himself you know eight knockout wins in his career likes to pressure people in the octagon and he's gonna want to you know come out aggressive and, and fight like that too you know i did want to take you know maybe the under in this fight i ended up laying off of it um but i think turner is able to to kind of keep medic at range a little bit more um i think the four and a half inch reach in the two inch height advantage is definitely going to help him you know turner is just a very very big guy um, and he's got a decent ground game. So, you know, I think if he can get medic to the ground and really, you know, try and, and grapple with him a little bit, it can definitely help. You know, he's not the best wrestler in the world um, by any means, but medic also not a very good wrestler. Um, honestly, we could see this thing stay on the feet and just, you know, slug it out. I would not be surprised, but a submission for Turner is not off the table, you know, has two on his record. Um, and he's really just a guy that both these guys are just guys who are, are looking to finish a fight as quickly as possible um, for turner though you know he's got to be patient he's got to wait for his opportunities if he just tries to come out swinging um and, and just go knock out medic you know medic might find something um and same for medic though they, both these guys really i think the patient fighter in this fight is gonna win um honestly i think that's gonna be turner you know while medic is a good striker has some good footwork um I just don't think that he is at near the level that Turner is coming to this fight. I think Turner is, is still just straight up the better fighter um, and even getting a little bit of plus money, um, depending on the odds here. You know, it's it's a pretty even fight. Turner, you know, a little bit slight underdog here. Um, I think Turner just has way more value here. I think he gets the KO in round two, taking Turner plus 105 in this one. And next, a fight that everyone was waiting for on this card, Robbie Lawler, Nick Diaz 2. Um, you know, Robbie Lawler, <laughs> 28 and 15 in his pro career, and Nick Diaz, 26 and 9. And we can talk about these two skill sets all we want and, and, and everything about it. But there's just a couple of points for these two fighters that just make this fight so, so interesting. I mean, the first being that they fought all the way back in UFC 47 back in 2004. Um, and Nick Diaz got the win in that fight. But we sit here, you know, what, 15 years later, these two fighters have changed very much since that last fight. You know, Robbie Lawler comes into this one on a four fight losing streak, you know, hasn't had a win since 2017 when he beat Donald Cerrone, um, you know, lost to Magny, Covington, Askren, you know, it hasn't had the greatest fights here of recent, but at least he's been in the octagon you know nick diaz hasn't fought since that anderson silva fight in 2015 that ended up being a no contest um and if we go you know looking for his last win you got to go back to all the way to 2011 when he fought bj Penn. you know october 2011 so um these two fighters are are aging to say the least but i think it's a, a very intriguing matchup a, a very good matchup between these two fighters um you know robbie lawler is a, a you know a guy who is a good striker we see a lot of striking for him also a decent and grappler um but it will be interesting i think with a five round fight here you know um you know the diaz brothers obviously the, the two guys are getting five round fights um in non-made event non-title fights um and i absolutely love it i think we should have more five round fights you know it just makes it all way more interesting and it's just honestly you know i could talk about you know what nick diaz has done in the past but it's just impossible to know what he is going to look like in a fight six years after his last fight. Um, you know, if we see, you know, video clips, interviews, stuff he's posted, he looks like he's in great shape. But let's be honest, every fighter looks like they're in great shape and, you know, he's going out and doing press tours like that. So it, it's hard to really get a good read on that. Um, I think he could honestly get a finish in this fight. We've seen Robbie Lawler kind of degraded in his last few fights. 
and Nick Diaz with the combinations with the footwork with a two inch reach advantage in this fight I think he could have an advantage you know the, the odds are dead even um but honestly I, I I could keep talking about this you know Robbie Lawler is gonna you know gonna try to avoid getting stuck up against the cage and I think if Robbie Lawler can come out fast in this fight he has a better chance to win but really, it comes down to one thing. Nick Diaz is fighting at the UFC again, um, and I absolutely love that. So this might just be a fun pick. This might not be the, the greatest analysis in the world. But if Nick Diaz is on the card, I absolutely have to back him. So um, I think Nick Diaz gets his first victory in a nearly a decade. Honestly, I think he could finish Robbie Lawler in you know the third, fourth, maybe even fifth round. I think we could see a knockout. So I'm taking Nick Diaz minus 115 here in this fight. And finally, the final fight of the night, the main event, Alexander Volkanovsky taking on Brian Ortega. Volkanovsky 22 and one in his pro career, Brian Ortega 15 and one. So, you know, both these guys, a lot, a lot of combined wins between them. Um, and obviously we saw, you know, the ultimate fighter leading up to this fight between these two. But when we look at this fight, you know, just breaking down the fight here, Volkanovski, you know, comes into this one after defending the belt against Max Holiday, the split decision victory in that one. Um, Brian Ortega looked very good in that last fight against the Korean Zombie, who I believe was last October. So these are definitely two fighters who are looking very good. You know, um, I think Volkanovski is going to want to box in this fight. He has the two and a half inch reach advantage, which I think is is definitely going to help him out. And I think he's going to look to close range with that, you know, advantage. I think it's it's gonna definitely help him he's really just the more accurate striker in my opinion and i think he definitely has an edge on the feet against brian ortega not to say that brian ortega is good you know he definitely turned thing around against the korean zombie after that max holloway loss um but his striking, while it's it's good, I don't think is near the level that Volkanovski's is. He does have pretty strong Brazilian jiu-jitsu, though, um, a very, very strong grappler. So if Ortega can get this thing to the mat, I think he could definitely have an advantage from that aspect. Um, but I think with Volkanovski's leg kicks um, that are going to help him, you know, control the range, control the pace of this fight, a very strong wrestling, you know, background, not to mention an improved grappling skill set. You know, Ortega might have the advantage grappling, but it's not like Volkanovski has no grappling ability at all um i really think with the five round fight here i think we see ortega get a little bit tired out in the later rounds not to say that he has a bad gas tank or anything because he definitely does i just don't think it's near the level of of volkanovsky i think volkanovsky is going to have more stamina in this fight um you know volkanovsky is defending the belt um obviously i think that that not i guess it gives him a, an advantage because that's not the right word um but definitely you know is in the back of his mind um i think he's going to pull away in the later rounds i think this goes to decision though i honestly don't see either one of these guys getting a finish of any means i would kind of be shocked if that did happen um i'm not completely shocked but um i don't really see it ending like that i think these two put on a pretty good fight i think volkanovsky comes out victorious in the end i think he gets the decision win um so taking volkanovsky minus 175 in this fight but that is it for probably our biggest ufc betting card in, in quite some time i don't remember the last time we had five fights that um we were betting on but it looks to be a very good one. If you haven't already checked out the computer model picks on hottipbets.com, definitely head over there, check those out, as well as got college football, NFL action um, up on the website, up on the YouTube channel. So go take a look at all of that. If you're not already following me at hottipbets, Chris, on Twitter and Instagram, make sure you follow me there, as well as on the Best Stamp app. You can get early access to all the picks, post all the picks up on Best Stamp right before I record each episode. Also, follow the Hot Tip Best, uh, main account on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok to stay up to date on all of the computer model action, as well as if you're watching here on youtube hit the like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future content and most importantly drop a comment down below let me know who you guys are betting on for this card absolutely stacked ufc card got a couple more pay-per-views coming up here in a few weeks that are great so um dana's definitely ending the year off very strong here so thanks for watching today's show i will see you guys tomorrow